Good morning and a warm welcome to our Holy Communion service with the Book of Common Prayer this morning. We're going to start with the Collect for Purity uh, and the words will be on page four or on the screen as well. Let's say together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And a summary of the commandments. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write all these, thy lords, in our hearts, but we beseech thee. The collect for our Queen, Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church and to rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that seeing knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory. And that we and all our subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The collect for today is God, for as much as without thee we are not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1 up to verse 7. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. <clears throat> My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a watchtower on it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem, and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done to my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do with my vineyard I will take away the hedge and, I will, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. And he looked for justice, justice but saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. Here ends the first reading. Can I invite you to stand for our gospel reading? The Holy Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing among and he asked them, why have you been standing here all day, long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, 
call the workers and pay them their wages. Beginning of the last ones, hired, and going to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And when they received it, they began to crumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour. They said, but you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Am I not being unfair? Am, am I not being unfair to you, friend? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who, has hired, who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I am with my own money? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be lost. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please do take a seat. <clears throat> so there was two parables, so to say, two stories about the vineyard. Uh, the first one in the book of Isaiah, uh, which is really clearly expressed by the prophet that the vineyard is the nation of Israel. Whereas the second one, that is not entirely clear, although Jesus has another parable about a vineyard where he sent his prophets of his, his servants and then eventually his own son. And that clearly refers to that first reading. But I want to focus today on the parable that sends workers and who genuinely work for the master, they are hired workers, uh, but then, in the end, they crumble, well, the ones who are hired first, at least. And um, it's for those of us who are familiar with the parables and with the scriptures, uh, a known story. For some of us, this might be the very first time you've heard it, and you might feel, well, that's a bit of an injustice here. Would it not be right to give others a bit more because they've worked more hours? And if you were an employer, you could see the reason for that. But we might need to understand the context a little bit, what was said and who is saying what. Most of the parables in the scripture are about Jesus, but they're also about the surprise that God's kingdom is about. It is also about the upside down nature and character of God's kingdom. And finally, it is about triggering a response for those who are hearing the parables, and that includes us. So what happens in this particular passage is that these are hired men who are waiting in the market and all would like to be hired. It's not that people are there from, well, let's hope that they only get hired for an hour. They generally want to feed their families. They generally want to be hired. And those who are not hired, uh, you can say that is bad luck to some extent, because they are not being employed and they wish to be. And for some of you, you might recognize that if you are in unemployment or have been in unemployment for a while, you are rather keen to be in employment because actually that brings money into the household or into uh, what you need. So that's the one conduct. And then what happens is that the owner of the vineyard is a generous owner. He offers one denarius. And you can almost say that if you were a hired worker, you were triple lucky because you get a very, very good pay for only a day's work. So that shows tremendous generosity of this owner who wants to hire you. And then we see that he goes back to the market and then and goes back again and back again. And then people are hired at different intervals of the time, some of them at midday, some of them slightly later. And at the very end of the day, he still finds some workers and he asks them, why have you not been working? And they simply say, no one has hired us. In other words, we would have loved to. And then that, he pays them and he starts paying the last ones and he pays them exactly the same and then... Uh, the, he pays the ones he hired first and their jaws are dropping because they see they get exactly the same pay. 
And at first value, I would agree, and I hope you do as well, that is some form of injustice because some have worked harder than the other. But what we're missing is that there is a generosity here, that the owner is tremendous generous to those he hired first and hired last regarding their pay and regarding the fact that he hired them. And the other part is that it teaches us something about the upside-down nature of the kingdom. Some of us might be lucky to be in employment, and others might not. But for God, it doesn't really look at status or hard work as such. He looks that his heart and his nature, his character, is of generosity and he gives. And you can almost say that God's generosity is larger, is more present than his justice, which is just. He's not an injustice landlord owner. He's not paying others nothing or less than he has promised. He is definitely justice. But his compassion appears to be larger than the justice issue that are there. Which means that all are made equal in the kingdom of God. And that's a lesson for us. Because sometimes we might be grudging, doing a lot of work, and perhaps in service for God, and others don't. And others might just be saved at the last minute. At the last minute they say sorry. As in the salvation story of one of the convicts that hangs at Jesus' side on the cross. He didn't do much well in his lifetime. He probably was a murderer because he was convicted to death on the cross. And he says in the last breath, the last moments before he dies, he says, would you remember me? And Jesus forgives him. And he gives him the same salvation, life eternal, than those who have been following Jesus from a very young age. That's not because God is unjust. God's generosity is so large that he offers it to both. And that's the lesson of this particular parable. And I think to put it into a bit of a context for our own situation, sometimes we swing either to one end or to the other end. And on one end, sometimes we think, oh, look what I've done. And I've done more. Then there is a pride. Because God is paying you far more than your work. He's giving you far more than you deserve. And sometimes we swing to the other side, where we feel we don't deserve. And we don't really feel worthy to receive God's salvation. And that's neither right either. Because God offers it to both. So we have to be almost... Rather than, a, rather than a pendulum where we swing from one to the other, either to pride or to false pride, where we are not unworthy, in the middle to accept God's love and grace and compassion for us. And that's the message of this par parable, the message of those who are saved by him, who are welcomed to him as workers into his vineyard, and then he offers us far more than we worked for, both those who work the whole day and those who work for an hour. Because his love, his denarius, so to say, his payment, is far more than we should deserve. And that is the beauty of God, that his justice is there, but his generosity is so large that it outweighs anything. And it's the upside-down nature of God's kingdom in this parable, the surprise that it brings, but also the response to us in the way we engage with the message that we are thankful for what God offers to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to the creed, and can I invite you to stand for this? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, 
very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, whom for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please take a seat. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come today before you in response in prayer to what we've heard, we thank you that you are a generous God, that you give abundantly and far more than we have worked for. And that is all of us. And as the scripture says that we're saved by grace. It's not because of our effort, because of what you did. And that what we do, we do as part of our identity and our worship to you. With joyful hearts. And we come before you, Lord, to pray for ourselves and for the needs of our community and for the world around us. And so, Lord, we pray that as we go through the week, that you will bless us, that all our words and actions will be seen as with honesty, but also with integrity, that at all times we will be accountable to you. We pray for our families and friends, those that, those that struggle and perhaps suffer from illnesses, be it mentally, be it physically. We want to lift them before you, Lord, and say, would you, in your mercy, come and bring healing, restoration, and comfort. We pray for our nation, Lord, for the different political opinions that there are regarding how to respond to the pandemic, the different scientific responses that we are listening to, and for the leaders of our nation, be it local leaders, those that implement the new guidelines, be it our government, our parliament, our prime minister, the ministers and the members of parliament who hold them accountable. We pray that you will bless them with wisdom, integrity, compassion, and that they seek the best interests for those in their constituency, but also for those in the nation. Father, as we are part of a global world, we pray for those negotiations that are planned, are happening with other countries, with the European Union. And again, Lord, we pray for those leaders in their response to the pandemic. And Lord, we look for a solution for a change in the current status quo, be it in medication, in vaccinations, in that what is right. Because, Lord, we believe that the virus isn't right. We believe it has destroyed things. And so we come with repentance, with sorry, for our part of what we failed to do, to do right in your world. And Lord, if we think of your world, we think of the different conflicts, of their overconsumption, 
that we are realizing is taking place, and even our own part in this, and how you call us to change our behavior. We pray for wisdom and help in that, so that we may witness as your people to a world around us that you are good and that there is hope. And for those, Lord, that are suffer and are in such difficulty, we pray that the good news of the gospel, that life can be lived today, that there is a resurrection, will be revealed and understood. And so we pray for your church across the globe, your church in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, in the Western world, as they come together today in different parts, may you be glorified and may the good news be spread among all the nations. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're coming now to the invitation to the confession. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here, what comfortable words our Saviour said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul says, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sin. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It's very meet, right, and abounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, 
whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy this gives thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And that institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We must humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, holy institution, and in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body. When the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remissions of sins. Do this as often you shall drink it in the remembrance of me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. As our Saviour Christ had commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them to trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Prayer of Thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for the thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and thereby are the very members incorporated in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we must humbly beseech thee, our Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. 
So we stand for the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards man. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remains with you always. Amen.